Hello everyone, welcome back to techtrue.com. In this short video, we will understand schedules. Okay, so we already have learned a bit about schedules. So schedule is basically the sequence of execution of operations from various transactions. So let's say if I have transaction T1 and T2 having various operations, let's say T1 has A1, B1 and T2 has A2, B2. Okay, so we can have various execution order of operations and we know that to improve the performance, we execute the transactions in parallel manner, right? So in interlived fashion, when we talk about operations, right? So the idea is to increase the performance. So here we will have, let's say, multiple operations in transaction T1 and T2 will have multiple operations. Now, one way of executing is we execute all the operations from T1 first, then T2. Okay, so one schedule can be T1 followed by T2. But mind will that a transaction contains multiple operations, right? And each operation may not be CPU intensive, right? What I mean by saying is these operations will not be CPU intensive, all operation will not be CPU intensive, there will be multiple operations which require only input output, right? And when input output is done, CPU remains idle, okay? So the idea is, the moment CPU becomes idle, if we can schedule some other operation to execute over CPU from different transaction, that will improve the performance, right? So that is also we shall study under process management in operating system. There we have various process, we call it process. Here we are calling it operation, but the idea is same, right? The idea is to improve the performance by scheduling the CPU, right? So the one way is that T1 will be followed by T2, but this is not a best way to schedule, okay? So what we do, we schedule tran various transactions over CPU, Okay, all, all the transaction, let's say T1, T2, all transaction will be executing parallelly. Okay, but the operations will not be parallel. Two operations are executed one by one. Okay, so as some operation from this transaction is executed and then this transaction, this, this, something like this. So overall, both of the transactions are pros progressing parallelly. Okay, and that's why we are saying that multiple transactions are executing parallelly, but internally the process are executing, I mean, these operations are being executed one by one, okay? And especially in case when operations are CPU intensive, right? There may be, uh, I mean, this is the job of scheduler, of course. So if some process requires only IO, it can be executed parallelly, fine? Well, so we have to achieve maximum performance and that's why we do scheduling and this schedule here we talk about schedules of operations so here when i'm saying it's t1 followed by t2 it will be a1 b1 then a2 b2 right first a1 operation then b1 operation then a2 then b2 similarly we can have t2 followed by t1 right so there will we will have a2 b2 then a1 b1 right so likewise we can schedule fine now from the previous lecture we have already understood that the execution order of operations should be same as they are in the individual transactions okay so in a schedule, let's say this is a schedule, okay? Apart from A1, B1, other operations are there in this schedule SN. But B1 will be always after A1, okay? So A1 can be somewhere here and then B1 can be somewhere here. Multiple operations can come in between, but the idea is that A1 from transaction T1 will be executed first and then B1, okay, great. So now the question is, how many such schedules we can have? 
so validity of the schedule we will decide later okay but first of all when i'm saying valid it means that the schedule will end up with consistent data okay so uh, that we will decide later but first let's count how many schedule we can have following the rules of scheduling okay so one rule which we know is that a1 i mean the order of operation must be as in the transaction right so now let's say i have transaction t1 with n1 number of operations transaction t2 with n2 number of operations transaction t3 with n3 number of operations and so on so i have transaction tm with n m number of operations right now the first question is how many number of serial schedules are possible so this is a simple question of permutation that if we have m objects in how many ways we can arrange n objects okay so if i have i have m transactions so in how many ways i can arrange m transactions right so that will be done in factorial m ways right if you want to understand this you can understand it like this that if it is m transactions we have m places okay m and in how many ways i can put the transaction at each place so on the first place we have m options right out of m transactions i can choose any one to take the first place now next one we will have m minus 1 next one we will have m minus 2 similarly m minus 3 and here it will be 1 at end right fine so when we multiply this it will be obviously how much m into m minus 1 into and so on that will come out to be m factorial right now this is about serial schedule i am saying serial right but that is not always required when it is asked that how many schedules are possible whether it is serial or not okay how many possible schedules are there with m transactions each having various operations so when it is asked that how many schedules are possible of course you can understand that i have transaction t1 t2 t3 and tm and i have in each transaction like t1 have n1 operation t2 have n2 operation t3 have n3 operation tm has n m operations okay so now when i am asking that how many schedules are possible here the arrangement was on the basis of transaction okay so inside the transaction the schedule was in the same order okay and even it was like when one operation starts from one transaction all the operation will be finished right so it was the arrangement of transaction here not the schedule but when i am asking schedule it means that the should the operations from other transaction may also come in between right so it means now this is arrangement of operations this was arrangement of let me write it down arrangement of transactions fine and it is arrangement of operations okay now so what will be the possible number of schedule so as i am arranging operations it will be so total here it was factorial m okay here it will be factorial of total number of operations so uh, what what is the total number of operations i have i have n1 plus n2 plus n3 up to nm okay so factorial of it fine so this will be the total number of possible arrangement of operations right but but we know that 
from one transactions from one transaction the operation should be in same order right so in that case we will have to divide this so understand it like this that if in first transaction i have n1 operation these n1 operation have to be in same order right so we will divide with n1 factorial similarly from transaction t2 also the n2 operations have to be in same order that's why we will divide it into n2 factorial we will we will divide with n2 factorial similarly n3 factorial and up to n m factorial okay so this is the formula for getting number of schedules okay now the question is in first case why i was not dividing m factorial with something right so in the first case the condition is not violated as i am arranging the transaction itself not the operations inside the transaction so operations are obviously in the same order right so we need not to divide here with something okay but in this case we have to divide so this is for total number of schedule and this is total number of serial schedule so if i ask how many number of non serial schedules are possible then of course you can subtract m factorial from these many numbers these this expression okay fine okay so out of all schedules possible here we can also have schedule which will not end up with correct data right but here as it is serial schedule it is okay right it is okay and it will always end up with correct data but here we also have some schedule okay or many schedules which are which will be leading us to inconsistent data okay because it will work with same variable and it may corrupt the data right so we have to understand how to recognize what are the correct schedule and what are the schedule which will lead us to inconsistency okay so to recognize we need to understand the basics of what are the various kinds of schedule we have okay so in next lecture we will understand the various types of schedule so see you in the next lecture thanks for watching